uh, every week I'm giving you a verse about victory, overcoming, um, because uh, the, part of this deal is, you know, you've got to believe that God can give you victory, and or you don't fight, and uh, and there's lots of Bible uh, verses, and, and, and just because you've been defeated or, you know, ha- have had a defeat in your life doesn't mean that you're going to have defeat from now on, right. and uh, but maybe you didn't know how to fight, um, and uh uh, you know, in uh, in World War Two, there was uh, you know World War Two is a big switch, or you know, from you know World War One also, but uh, of technology and war. And uh, at one point, Poland had a uh, cavalry on horses uh, charging uh, against German tanks. Okay, and who do you think won? Um, and uh, and why? Because um, methodology. Um, and tools help, and uh, and God gives us some of those things to uh, work. First John, I'm going to give you some verses, and uh, uh, just some verses about victory, and uh, because there is a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And last week, last week we did Romans eight, but uh, <coughs> verse four and five. Uh, so for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is uh, the Son of God. And so victory comes by faith and, uh, and by who you believe in. And, uh, and so that is there. And uh, that salvation brings victory. Um, now, remember, um, this is important. important uh, I, I laugh. It's, not, it's sad. It's just most churches don't understand you have to overcome the world. Um, they embrace the world. Um, but uh, it says you can overcome the world, and it takes the, it takes Jesus and believing on Him in faith to do that. And but that, but it, we do have that victory. And uh, who is He that overcometh the world? Um, he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. It's a, it's a wonderful thing that we can have victory, and uh, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Today we're talking about fear, and uh, the battle plan. Let's just review it here. Um, on one side is the battle plan, and the back side is the verses for. Uh, that what we do. Uh, a, a is assurance of salvation. Second Peter one ten. Make your call and election sure. If you do these things, you shall never fall. And then baptism after salvation is the answer of a clear conscience towards God. It's also the first step of obedience. If you won't do the first step of obedience, you can't really. It's like a person wanting to take your finals, but they don't go to school. And uh, uh, well, you got to go, and you got to start there. And baptism is where you start. Church and fellowship. And uh, faithful to church <clears throat> and uh, having good fellowship, and uh, that's important. And they were at church constantly in the Bible. And uh, <clears throat> it, it, we, this week, um, and it's fairly common, this week we're uh, dealing with um, uh, some, some problems. Um, uh, and, and we're dealing with multiple problems, you know, usually it just the area we're in and all the, the, you know, the people, we deal with a lot of people who are new Christians and come out of the world and, and there's a lot of tragedy in, the, in this area and, and problems, but um, one of the people uh, we're dealing with this week who has some pretty serious problems, been at a church for a pretty good amount of time, really common, get at a church, month or two, three, then all of a sudden they start saying, why is God doing this to me, I'm having such a problem, I'm struggling so bad, and, uh, and, and a lot of those problems go away and you just get faithful to church and you just start learning, getting fellowship and you're in the presence of Jesus. A lot of stuff happens when you're in church that, that isn't maybe you would just put a direct line to, but it's just a consistent pattern um, we see. Dedication to prayer, personal prayer, prayer in church, and prayer uh, by others for deliverance from faults. Sometimes you need someone praying for you. That's the way God ordained it. And then extra Bible, Psalm 119, 9 and uh, 11, and uh, take a Bible bath. Uh, washed by the water of the word. We said memorize specific verses uh, for your faults, and that's one 19, Psalm 119, 11. Um, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. And so that is the battle plan. Last week we did pride. How many of you got rid of all of your pride last week? Okay, all right. And uh, this week um, we're doing fear, and fear is huge. My soul is fear of a huge thing. Uh, that that uh, people deal with it's a it's a it can be something that really messes us up and uh, and so I'm not going to get to all the verses right now I'm going to give you some thoughts on fear and then we'll go through the verses that we have here and uh, you can come to me and say pastor there's some more verses that could have been in there I know I ran out of room 
there's a lot about fear in the Bible. And, uh, and so usually these, these battle plans is one side of one page. But there's so much in the Bible about fear. I didn't even go to courage, mostly. I just went to fear um, because, you know, courage, uh, you know, conquers fear and things like that. But um, we, didn't, uh, we didn't have time to do that. But I want to give you some thoughts because I think we can misunderstand what the Bible teaches on fear. And uh, so some of these verses are going to be in the inside. For example, Matthew 10, 28. Um, the first thing I just wanted you to know is fear is not sin. Okay, fear is, fear is a natural part of the human experience, like happiness and depression. Fear can help you. Um, <clears throat> um, you can run faster uh, a lot of times when you're afraid. Uh, and uh, sometimes you need to run faster. And, uh, and so if there's a, a, a crazy mad dog chasing after you and you're 10 feet from your door and the dog is 40 feet from you and you get some fear, you might make it in and, uh, because fear can give you adrenaline. So fear, you know, um, can be used in a good way. For example, the Bible commands you to fear God. Okay, so it's not sin. Okay, Matthew ten twenty eight is somewhere in the well. It's in order. It's in chronolog- It's in biblical order there chronologically. Matthew ten twenty eight. Fear not uh, them that, that which kill the body, uh, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear them which are able to s- destroy both body and soul in hell. So understanding the fear part there, Jesus is telling us to fear. <clears throat> but he's telling us also who not to fear. In that case, you have to understand, there is a controlling of your fear. You're choosing not to fear this, but you're choosing to fear this. Don't fear man who can just destroy your body, but rather uh, fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. As you get more spiritual, um, the body becomes far less important. When you're, when you're natural, the natural man, the receiving of the things of God, when you're in the natural state, that's all you think about. It's physical death and fear of that. And, uh, and Jesus says, don't fear those who can kill the body. It's just the body. You're talking about the body, it's going to die anyway, but eternal soul. And so don't fear um, the, the, the humans, but fear um, God. <clears throat> and uh, fear hell. Yeah. Like bring someone to get saved. That's a good thing. I've always feared backsliding. Uh, and, and it's kept me from backsliding. A lot of people run close to the edge of it and don't, they, they think, oh, you know, I might not do it. And if I do, it'll come back. Not me, man. I, I, I've seen too many people who started in, on that on that slide down the hill and never came back up. Um, I've seen how hard it is to get back up. And I fear failing God and uh, and stuff. And, and, and it, it, can, it can be a good thing. But do you notice there in this verse, you are controlling fear. Fear is not controlling you. You are controlling fear, but fear is not controlling you. And that's, but fear is not a sin in and of itself. Number two, the spirit of fear. You need another one? Uh, anybody else, anybody doesn't have a lesson? If you don't have a lesson, raise your hand. We'll get it for you. We have, okay. Um, <clears throat> number two, the spirit of fear is not what God has given us. And that verse is uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And this is a verse we, we have, we just think every Christian should memorize now because um, we're, we're coming into perilous times. And uh, the devil's going to attack. He just, uh, I've never, you know, seen um, the spirit of fear so much um, as, you know, last, maybe some things are, have come in the last year, some in the last three years. Uh, the spirit of fear is, I've noticed the last five years, maybe, <clears throat> just uh, people who can't function and the spirit of fear coming over them. There's always been a spirit of fear. There's always been that. Uh, uh, and some people struggle with it all the time. But the spirit of fear is something that is not what God's given us. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. I want to say the Holy Spirit removes a lot of the fear. That's not the spirit God gives, the, the fear God gives us. Um, though when you have the Holy Spirit, I mean, you get a boldness. Acts 4, you know, 31, Acts uh, just, just, just follow those. They speak the word of God of boldness, and they're filled with the Spirit, and and God's Spirit overrides your spirit of fear. Um, but uh, it, it, so it's a, a spirit of fear it, we're not supposed to have. It's not been given to us. Number three, um, <clears throat> fear can keep us from doing what we're supposed to do. Um, we see this in Joshua uh, chapter one, and God is is very careful because um, Joshua has to do some very uh, courageous things, and he has to lead the nation. He's never led the nation before. He has to go in against very powerful enemies. The whole thing is very scary. Moses is no longer with him. And so he really emphasizes, Joshua, you cannot fear because you will not be able to do this deal. you got to do. 
and and <clears throat> and so um, fear will stop you, and so it's very it stops you from doing what God has for you to do. Verse two, uh, Moses, is ser- my servant, is dead now. Therefore, um, uh, arise and uh, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people. And so then you see down uh, verse um, six, be strong and of good courage. Uh, uh, for unto this people shall thou divide the land for an inheritance, uh, inheritance for the land. Um, verse 7, only be strong and very courageous. Verse 9, have a night of command thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. There are moments in your life where um, there are going to be great moments, there are going to be turning points, but fear comes. And boy, the devil just comes and says, this might not happen, and this might happen. What if you do this, and what if this goes this way? And then you start operating by fear. Never take counsel of your fears. God's not giving us the spirit of fear. It can keep you from doing what you're supposed to do. Um, it, it, can go all the, for, it can go from the start of, of true paranoia. Um, we, we, uh, just for example, this, the, to show you, an ex- sometimes you see seeing things in extreme, you can understand how it's done, and then pull it back to your realm. Um, we had someone, <coughs> some, some of you were helping with this, uh, someone who had some, uh, some real mental problems and a paranoia and uh, homeless, living in, in a vehicle, and uh, it was bad conditions. I mean, really bad, and it was, it was hot. It was the peak of summer, and uh, they had, a, they had um, housing, and they had, they had, they had a, uh, a, a nice apartment given to them and uh, taken care of the whole year. And uh, and their vehicle, you never see the homeless vehicles where it's full all the way to the brim in every direction except where they're sitting, and it's super hot. You know, it was that. And <coughs> we knew the person. They'd been to our church. And, and and I said, you know, you need to take this apartment. But they were afraid that if they took the apartment, the apartment has rules, and if their vehicle didn't start sometime, their vehicle would sit long enough and eventually get towed, and if they got kicked out of their apartment, they wouldn't have a place to live. Do you see all those steps there? The vehicle was running. The apartment probably would never notice. If it, no, and I said, uh, so wait, I just worked through a problem. I said, your vehicle's running, and if it breaks down, I will come help you fix it. And if we can't get it fixed, we will push it to another spot in the parking lot. And if not, we will f- pay a mechanic to fix your car. Take the apartment. But what if I take the apartment and all of a sudden I can't fit all my stuff into it because I have a bunch of stuff in storage somewhere? Just, and, and we couldn't get through it. They, they refused the apartment. The social workers contacted me. Can you help us? We cannot get her to take the apartment. I said, I, I can't. I've tried. Because fear keeps you from even doing things you should do. Okay? And, 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 and so they continue to live in their vehicle that broke down all the time. Okay? And, 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 and it, it's, a, it's a terrible thing. But not everybody, that, that, that's serious paranoia. Okay? And, 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 and that's horrific. And, and by the way, a lot of that comes because you've lived in with paranoia. You've lived with fear long enough. It's, it's overtaking you. You have the spirit of fear. Now it, now it controls you. But it, it isn't always something like that. <clears throat> it goes all the way down to sometimes you don't do what you, sh- you should do because you're afraid to try again. Because you're afraid you fail. You'll fail. You're afraid of things that haven't even happened yet. You're afraid of your future, your retirement, your finances. You're afraid that if you go back to college, you're going to fail. You're afraid that what if I go and uh, get married and my, re- my relationship doesn't work out? You're f- you're not making decisions based on fear. And all of it's bad. It's called evil surmisings. You're making up things that haven't even happened to be afraid of. You're assuming things are going to go wrong. You're assuming that. And goodness, if I did that, I would be paralyzed because God always pushes me to things I don't know how to do or things that are bigger than me all the time. And if I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine if I always all the time, what if, what if? <laughs> By the way, I assume a if <laughs> in the process. There's going to be a bunch of ifs in there. And, and I, I, I just have learned not to live, you know, by God's grace. God's able to handle it, and we'll make it, and we'll figure out the ifs. Stuff's going to happen. And, 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 and some people fear because they're too self-conscious. And, and you're always thinking about yourselves and your failures, and you're afraid to get back up. A just man falls seven times, rises up again. That 
spirit of fear keeps you from doing what you should do. And uh, sometimes you're, you're supposed to start a business. Sometimes you're supposed to go back to college. Sometimes you're supposed to go ask that person out. Stop ch choosing anything by your fear. What if they say no? Then they said no. They missed out on you. Okay, and, uh, and, and you just, just got just to realize that, that you, you can't just let fear run your life. Every, everything worth doing usually has a risk to it, and, 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 but it's not foolish risks. It's not unwise risks. It's obedient things that God wants you to do. Open doors God's give you, but I've never been to that door. Yeah, I've said before that the monster that most people know is not as scary to them than the monster they don't know. Right. And so they'll live with the monster they know. And it could be a horrible relationship they're in. But if I leave, what will happen? Well, you already know where you are is horrible. You're already getting beat up every day. Okay? And and and, and so, you, 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 look, you, the monster you know, you're, you're in poverty. Well, if I move to some different area, it's, it's probably more expensive. And what if it doesn't work out? Well, you're already living in poverty. You might have a better life somewhere else. You can probably get a better job. You know what? You'll overcome if you just decide to just go forth boldly. But the monster people know they'll live with. They'll do with physical problems. They, they will live with a major physical problem because they're so afraid of a medical procedure. And they'll be in way more pain for the rest of their life than the medical procedure would have been because of fear. But the monster they know, right? Yeah. And, and, and so that, that's what we oftentimes uh, uh, do. And fear can do that to you. Um, uh, next, uh, fear um, uh, can uh, really, really, really bring horrible things. Uh, uh, can bring horrible things to you. Just a couple things, just to open up our, our verses there. And let's look at Romans. I think the, the verses I have here are in Romans. Romans eight fifteen. But you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of uh, 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 of adoption, wherever we cry, Abba, Father. And again, when I give you a verse, they're kind of in order here in, in, in the handout on the inside there. So, what can fear bring? If fear, if fear can bring bondage. Bondage. You're tied up. You can't function. You can't decide because of fear. Man, I just want to say, um, if you are a person who can't make decisions because of fear, you need someone to teach you and someone to bring you out of that. Um, you, you can call it overthinking. You can call it OCD. You can call it whatever. You cannot sit in the same situations and not function because of fear. You've got to learn to make decisions. Sometimes you have to pull the trigger. I don't mean shoot somebody, okay? And, and, and sometimes you have to say, you know what? I've got to make a decision here, and this one, this might happen, and this, this might happen. You know what? I prayed about this. I'm going to pick one. You just have to do it. it, it sitting there and not making it, it's amazing how many people, opportunities fly by them. I'm just not sure if I take this job or this job. If I take this job, this might happen in this job. And you think and think and think, and then you call and say, okay, I'll take this one. Oh, we already hired somebody. If you live your whole life with saying, oh, it's already passed. You can't do that anymore. <coughs> You've got to learn not to, to live in fear. You got to, sometimes you have to, and I'm not saying be hasty, because a hasty in spirit is not good, but um, fear can keep you. It can put you in bondage. You can't even make decisions. And, uh, and, and I see people afraid to help people because they're afraid they might do it wrong. And they might not know what to do. Look, you know, you, you, you go, you say, you know what? This person is really, really depressed. And I don't know if I know what to say. Look, they're really messed up. And if they kill themselves and you didn't say anything, you're really going to wish you'd have said something. And, 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 you know, you just go to God and say, God, I, I, I don't know what to say to them, but I need to talk to them. You put them in my path, and I really care about them. You know you're caring about them and saying something. It's not as much your words, just so you know that. Saying something caring makes as much difference. as Half the time, they don't do what you say, but you cared and talked to them, and, and you kind of pulled them out. What am I thinking? So don't, you really got to, you have to learn that you're in bondage in fear. And it brings bondage. And for in our last verse down there, 1 John 4, 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And I, you know, just <laughs> you have as much contact to people as I do. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll knock on a door, and, uh, and, and, and they'll, who is it? Oh, I'm from the church. And, and oh, what do you want? Well, we're just talking to people, inviting them to church. 
uh, 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 you know what? Um, uh, uh, do I know you? No, you don't know me, but you know what? I'm just a pastor, and I already know what they are, so I change my tone with them, real gentle, and then all of a sudden, the, the unlocking begins. Click, click, click. Click, 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 and then you try, clunk, clunk, clunk. Oh, I forgot two of them, clunk, 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 clunk. Then she opens the door, takes the track. I say, you know what? God loves you. We'd love to have a church. Our church is really nice and harmless. Everybody's really kind. And you can go there, and we'd be glad to have you. Well, I went, I went to church one time, and everybody kind of stared at me. Oh, we won't stare at you at all. <laughs> just, there's that spirit of fear. And everybody, when they walk with that, see that person, everybody just do this, you know. And, and uh, But uh, that, that spirit of fear, you know, in that torment. And, and by the way, some tough guys who got a bunch of Uzis have the same thing. They're living in fear with their conspiracy theories because they go to fear stuff all the time. Oh, man, they're coming, this and that. I got this. They're going to come and do that. I mean, they are so prepared. You know, their wife's wearing rags because he spent all his money on guns and bomb shelters and, you know, six years' worth of supply, you know, and everything else and, 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 and everything. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Okay, get yourself a gun and get yourself emergency food. Okay, and, you know, dig a hole under your house. But, you know, live. Quit being tormented by fear. Oh, look at that airplane. They might be spying on me. I'm not spying on you. You ever been in an airplane? You ever tried to look at people down there? They're small. Okay, stop. But it's a chemtrail behind it. No, they, there's a chemical for reason that there, there's a white line behind a jet. Stop. Get off your crazy websites. Read your Bible. And get rid of your fear. And that guy says, this, why is everybody afraid of everything? You're, you're huddled in your house. You're the guy on the weekends going in the jungle and fighting, pretending like you're fighting the government. You're living in fear. There's a lot of ways to be afraid. A lot of ways to be afraid. If people are afraid to love, people are afraid of rejection. Give me some fears. I got a list here I made somewhere. Who can tell me a, 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 that, not your fear, because you don't have fear, I'm sure, but do you, tell me, what kind of fears do you know people have that, 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 that brings them torment, that brings them bondage? Just fears that people will live with. Fear, fear of failure, okay? What else? Broken heart, Broken heart yeah. Success, there are people who fear success. Um, others? What's that? Fear of trusting God. Fear of trusting God, yeah. Okay, anything else? Other fears? Rejection, okay. Okay. You're believing. Fear to tell the truth, yeah. Fear of failure. Fear of rejection is really common. Um, that stops people from witnessing a lot. All right. So you see how fear has a lot of a lot of ways. Okay, let's go to the verses here. We did some of them. Let's just uh, go inside here. I'm just going to go through the verses. I'll comment on a few of them and uh, see how much time we have. <coughs> and and so. So after all I just said, all of a sudden you just realize, oh, fear affects me. I didn't think fear affects me. <laughs> Welcome to humanity. <laughs> the devil it, loves, he just watches your whole life and says, I know what you're afraid of. Let me use that. And, uh, and, and don't, uh, please, don't be, a, don't be offended at people who try to get you to overcome your fears. Because it bothers you. It's irritating. They're, they're pushing you. And, 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 you know, it's the old, you know, uh, I'm going to jump in the water eventually. And they just walk by and go, <laughs> and, uh, and you're like, no, I wanted to think about it more. You've been thinking for five minutes. <laughs> Our friends, when we were growing up at the river, they never bothered. If, if you think about it, okay, get in the water. It's, it might be cold. No, okay, uh, you know what? And then we just, somebody, somebody distract them and somebody else will go behind them and you're in. And, uh, and, and, and your friends will sometimes push you. You know what? I just need a witnessing partner, and, and you know what? I need you to go. I'm afraid. You know what? You, I'm going to be here, and I'll meet you at 2 o'clock, and you need to be there, and I, you won't have to talk at all. And just, just, they push you. That's okay. And, you know, hey, go apply for that job. You know you want it. Well, I don't know if I get the job. I don't, just get it. What if I don't do well there? Then you made good money for a couple weeks, so they fired you. Go get another job. Relax. <laughs> don't be afraid. 
Don't be afraid. And let people push you out of your fears. How many don't like when people push, try to push you out of your fears, over your fears? You know, it's no fun, is it? It's no fun. How about, how about when you know you need to go tell somebody to pray for you and you're afraid? Yep, 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 yep. And pastor's been pushing you on that. Amen. I'm a, isn't it amazing you come here and give 10% of your income to be tormented by somebody and, uh, and uh, on your weekends? And uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10 and uh, uh, verse 6, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that go, doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. So if, you're, if you have a spirit of fear, you struggle with fear, or in a certain area, these verses, start memorizing some of them. Maybe just put this up on your wall and read through these verses every day, but start working on the fear. Joshua 1, 9, have not I commanded thee. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Psalm 23, uh, 4 um, <clears throat> through five, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. <clears throat> um, you know, you, you, can, you can be, a, a lot of people, you know how many people, how many people want to go to church, they get to the church parking lot, and they get afraid to go into a new church? It's hard to go into a new a new church, and 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 you get afraid of stuff. I want to I want to read the, the last verse there because that verse there, there is a fear of growing older and your retirement and your health and people you love passing away and and uh, and and all the things if you can't take care of yourself, those are all legitimate things <clears throat> that that makes it so you need to plan. And there's nothing wrong with planning and thinking and and doing all that stuff. But I'm going to say, just I'm going to read the next uh, uh, verse, in verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you serve God, even the fears of the end of life, <clears throat> God is going to be merciful and kind to you as a shepherd till your end. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to have it all figured out. And you just, have, you just trust the Lord. And so, now, if I didn't have God... <coughs> You know, man, there's a lot of, there's so many fears out there. But with the Lord, even, even the, in the, the stuff's, you know, scary, and we've helped people through it, and, uh, and, 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 and try to, you know, give you the right resources, and, and, and there, there's a lot of things you can do. And, 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 you know, you ought to plan and do things and all that stuff. But, but you know, ultimately, you trust that God's your shepherd, and he's going to help you through it. And, and you'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and, and God will be with you. And so um, trust the Lord, and don't let those fears overwhelm you. And uh, fears, are, are fears are to make you take action. When you fear God, you, you do what he wants you to do. When you fear the dog, you run faster. Fears are, are, not, are not to control you and make you do wrong, but the devil twists our fears. Um, Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Um, of whom shall I be afraid? The fear of people is very important, but David overcame his fear of people by, the fear of, by, by realizing um, the Lord is greater. <clears throat> The Lord is greater. Do you know that there is no human who can hurt you if, you f if, if God is for you? God is greater than any human. And so you trust the Lord. <clears throat> and so Psalm and 34 and uh, verse 4, let's go there. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Boy, that's my testimony. <clears throat> I know you, 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 those who know me say, Pastor, you just, you just seem totally not afraid of anything. And I do live a very, I, I just, that's, that's not my struggle anymore. But God delivered me from all my fears. Growing up, I was a scared person. I had a bunch of phobias, okay? And, and I mean the phobias they say that are physical things. Like I was claustrophobic severely <clears throat> when I was a kid. I'm not the least bit claustrophobic even. And you might say, well, that, that can't be because that's part of a, that's actually a physical thing in your brain and da-da-da, you know. I mean, there's irrational fears, and then some people have, look, I'm just telling you, I was afraid of, I was afraid of natural disasters. I was afraid of nuclear war. I was afraid of uh, things that happened in the world. I was afraid of family things. I was afraid of, I was claustrophobic. I was afraid, I was afraid of a million things. When I got close to God, it just, I'm just, God delivered me from all my fears. And, 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 and 
uh, I'm telling you, I, I could be afraid. I know a lot of things. I put myself in a lot of situations to be afraid. I deal with a lot of scary stuff. I just don't have it because God delivered me. But the presence of God is what delivers you. He delivered me from all my fears. And when you, he sought the Lord, the closer you get to God and see his power and his majesty, his sovereignty, his ability to control things, his protection, his angels, and all the things you get, you just kind of say, well, what was I afraid of again? God's for me. God loves me. Why am I so afraid of somebody saying, you know, my, you know I don't like you. <laughs> I, I control my whole life. And, and people control, bad people control you by fears. It's a manipulation tool. And, 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 <clears throat> and, and I'll never talk to you again. I'm not afraid of that. Promise? And, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and, 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 and it, it, this stuff, when you're afraid, it's, it's amazing how you can be controlled. <clears throat> Psalm 56, 3, what time I'm, I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 91, 4 and 5, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid by the, of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. Not, Psalm 91, the whole chapter is about not fearing and God's protection. But understand, everything about Psalm 91 is under the shadow of his wings. It's being close to God. So if I could just tell you one thing about fear. When you get close to God, fears start losing all their power. If you don't know how not to be afraid and you can't logic it out or you have, it's irrational, which it is sometimes. We all have irrational fears sometimes. Okay? <clears throat> sometimes I laugh at myself. I said, you've done this and this and this and you're afraid of this. That's the dumbest thing in the world. And, and, and... <clears throat> And when, when you don't know what to do and you can't get ready for it, look, God just says to Joshua, I will be with thee. I sought the Lord and he delivered me, heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You just find that when you get close to God, fears lose their power and you just start, you start being able to be bold and doing as you should be doing. <clears throat> Proverbs 1, 33, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> that's about wisdom. Living wisely removes a lot of fears. <laughs> Can I tell you? So a lot of your fears get removed. You make good choices. You're, you handle your money wisely. You just lose your financial fears because you have, you're, have your bills paid and you're out of debt. And you can handle if you get laid off, for example. Okay? Um, it, you know, if you pay off your house, you're not so worried about finances. If you, if you have, if you marry the right person, you're not worried about the person leaving you all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Wisdom removes a lot of the fears. Yeah. You have good friends. You don't, you're not afraid they're going to abandon you because you're wise in who you picked as friends. Okay. Uh, wisdom <clears throat> and wisdom removes a lot of your fears. Not all of them, but it does, it does, it, 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 it does remove a lot of fears. And, uh, and, and helps you in that. And, you know, a, a drug addict going out there and, you know, he's afraid of, you know, contaminated needles. Okay, well, you're going to have fears. Okay, because you're, you're living foolishly. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to get arrested. I'm not. <laughs> okay, live wisely. You don't have to, every time you hear a siren, think they're, they're looking for you. It removes those fears. Isaiah 35, 4, say uh, to them that are of a faithful heart, be strong, be not, uh, uh, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with recompense, he will come and save you. Isaiah 41, 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's one of my favorite fear verses for me. Now for you, another one might speak to you. Amen. We awake? We doing okay? Yeah. I'm afraid nobody's listening. Uh, Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Eternal perspective uh, removes fear. John R. Rice had a, a man uh, put a, a gun to him in, in an elevator, and he's a great evangelist, and said, uh, give, me your <clears throat> give me all your money. Or I'll blow your brains out. Funny thing, he's pointing at his stomach. But he said, give me all your money, I'll blow, or blow your brains out. And uh, <clears throat> that's why the criminals. And, uh, and, and he said, son, you can't threaten me with heaven. You can't threaten me with heaven. 
And, uh, and so um, uh, the eternal perspective removes a lot of fear. Uh, Mark 4, 39 and 40, And he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto them, Peace be still, and the wind ceased. And there was a great calm, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is that you have no faith? I've shown you myself, and listen, don't do this to God. I've shown myself to you so many times. Why are you so afraid? Why do you have no faith? How can you not trust me yet? How many times has God taken care of you and you were afraid Then God took care of you? And at a certain point, okay, God says, all right, now you just, oh, ye of little faith. Why don't you trust me? How, how is it you're so afraid? Stop it. How many times have you been paranoid about your finances and I took care of you? How many times have you been afraid that you'd be alone I, and, and, and you did the right thing and you lost some friends and they give you better friends? Are you going to do it again? Amen. Luke 12, 32. I'm just going to amen myself for now. And you guys are getting so quiet nowadays. And it's, my wife told me last Sunday, or I think it was, it was post sugar shock syndrome from Christmas. Um, but uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, now no more excuses. It's New Year's. I stayed up till midnight. Okay. Wake up. And uh, get some coffee. And uh, Luke 12, 32. Fear not, the little flock, for it is your father's uh, good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Uh, John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me and my father's house for many mansions. Eternal perspective. Um, when you know you're going to heaven, how, how scary can earth be? You're going to be going home. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <clears throat> peace is the opposite of fear. When you have peace and, and, uh, and faith, these things just smash fear. Fear is a fire, and peace throws water on it. Faith throws water on it. Uh, 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 love, perfect love casts out fear. So uh, it's not just willing yourself not to have fear. It's getting the things that overcome fear. If you really have faith in God, why would you fear? You're in the hand of God, John 10 teaches us, and, and trust God. And so it's a wonderful thing. Peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth. The world has a different peace. The world has a peace that can be taken away. A war, a depression, a recession, a layoff. A hospital visit. All kinds of things can take away your peace. It, because Jesus says, I don't give you peace the way the world gives peace. My peace is different. I have a different peace. The peace I give you can't be taken away. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Notice that? Let not. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be afraid. <clears throat> Philippians 4, 6, and 7. What to do with your worries? Uh, let me go to Romans 8.15. I skipped that, sorry. For you have not, Romans 8.15, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Be careful for nothing. Don't worry. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Pray about it. With thanksgiving, let your request. Don't worry about it. Pray about it. People who learn to pray, quit worrying. Go and, uh, and pray about it and give it to God. And then lay it down. Uh, I had the verse in there. I took it out because I didn't have room. But 1 Peter 5, 7, cast in all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Uh, cast that care upon God. And then leave it there. And don't pick it back up after you prayed about it. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's a choice. Hebrews uh, chapter 13 and verse 8. Uh, so that he may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. First John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. <clears throat> There's a lot of verses on fear there. I don't look down on you at all if you have fear troubles. One person has pride problems, one person has lust problems, one person has anger problems, one person has fear problems. That's why we're teaching the battle plan. And, <clears throat> and, and, and if you have that struggle, look, it's part of being human. And, and if you think, man, I'm the only one who's afraid of this, and you might say, man, what I'm afraid of is not even that big of a deal. 
I know. Fear doesn't have to be rational. Ask somebody who's afraid of a little tiny spider. Okay, little tiny spider. They can be across the room, and it's not a poisonous spider. And if you're afraid of daddy long legs, then really, you need to see somebody. It's, I mean, there's a certain level of, okay, it's not scary, okay? <clears throat> but, you know, the f- fears aren't always rational. But, but they're real. Yep. The fear is real, even if what you're afraid of is not rational. You ever had somebody afraid you're not going to love them anymore, and you're going, of course they're going to love you. But it's not rational. The key, and I'm just saying... <clears throat> the cure for the fear is God's presence and God's words and God's systems and what he says to do. And if you do those things, you just start doing them, you'll just be all of a sudden saying, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and make that call. I've been afraid to contact that person. I'm, I'm afraid of what they're going to say, you know, but I, it's been 20 years and I know I should contact them. I've been sitting here for three years thinking about it, but you know what? You know what? I feel like I can do that. You won't even know that that happened because you've been hanging around God. Or because your faith is increased, because you've been spending more time in the Word, or because you're filled, filled more love and perfect love casts out fear, or whatever. But just when you get in the presence of God, and or because you're peaceful now, because you've got security in Christ, and you found out you're accepted in the beloved, and all of a sudden you're able to handle your fears. All of a sudden you say, you know what, Pastor, I'm going witness, and I know I've been making excuses, and you know what, <clears throat> even if someone says, you know, hey, I don't believe you, I think you're a nutball, slams their door, I think I'll be okay now. Because God helped you get rid of your fears. And, and now you're, you got rid of that. Now you're able to, and, and even, and sometimes your fears, your worst fear comes true. But you found out, as we'll talk about the next sermon, is a roaring lion. Even though it happened, it really wasn't that bad. And you could handle it. <laughs> and, and, and you're okay now. Because God gave you the grace. So we can overcome our fears. Hey, man, how many of you, the devil sometimes uses fear against you? Raise your hand. Okay, so look around. It's not just you. Okay, it's normal. So let's overcome this thing. How many found a verse that they liked? That they, that's, that's the one. That verse really helped me. I'm going to use that verse. How many found a verse? One of these verses. How many found several? All right, good. Take this, pin it up, or mem- memorize the verses. Read, them, read it every day. If the spirit of fear <clears throat> is something you struggle with, um, then you need to start memorizing these verses and, uh, and, and start with the ones that help you the most and you'll be surprised with that Bible bath and all those processes. Again, this is the battle plan. You start doing these things, start going to church faithfully, start uh, get your assurance, your salvation, all these things. You'll be surprised how you can overcome your fears and not be controlled by fears. Even though it might be a lifelong struggle because everybody has a lifelong struggle of something, <clears throat> And, and, and fear might be the thing you always tilt toward. You can always fight it and win. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the chance to teach on this, and I thank you for the battle plan, and thank you for victory over fears. I pray you'd help us to uh, have that and bless uh, all those people, and thank you for their honesty, Lord, and that they just admit that, Lord, and it's pretty much all of us. But thank you, Lord. We are more than conquerors, and you can give us that victory. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Thank you, Lord, that... Uh, uh, we can uh, fear not, neither be, do- be dismayed. And I pray you'd help us with these truths, and uh, thank you for all that it gives us. Thank you that we can always look at Psalm 23 or Psalm 91 or John 14 and just realize that we're going to be okay. And uh, we just thank you for your word and for your ways. In Jesus' name.